Thomas Alive Today presents Comp USA. Comp USA began in Dallas in 1984 under the name Soft Warehouse, a company that initially sold software and hardware directly to corporate customers and within a year had opened its first retail store. During its early years, management explored the idea of opening a superstore, a large facility offering complete lines of low-cost merchandise. While the concept had proved successful for such retailers as Toys R Us, Circuit City, and Office Depot, computer retail was generally thought to require a smaller sales staff expert in the technical nuances of the product. Software House, however, speculated that as the public became more familiar with computers, the computer retail operation would broaden in scope, and with a staff and management more skilled in marketing than in computers, the company opened its first superstore in 1988. While retail chains such as Computer City and Business Land emerged during the early 1980s, Soft Warehouse developed the first chain of superstores in the computer market. In January 1989, Soft Warehouse was acquired by a group of investors led by Ronald N. Dubin. Late that year, the company hired as its president and chief executive officer Nathan Morton, a former top executive of a leading retail chain called Home Depot. Morton had no background in computers, and he later recalled for a 1993 New York Times article that his friends and family were shocked that he took the leadership position at Soft Warehouse, some attributing the move to a midlife crisis. Morton, however, had a unique vision for the development of Soft Warehouse, which led to a period of explosive expansion for the company. Along with other new executives, who came to Soft Warehouse from Kmart, Heckingers, and Wix Lumber, Morton planned the construction of a series of superstores that would provide the lowest prices in the industry and the largest selection available on a national scale. 18 superstores were in operation by the end of the 1980s, and sales increased dramatically from $66 million in fiscal 1988 to $600 million in 1990. The company became the largest chain of computer superstores in the country, changing its name to Comp USA in 1991. The success of Comp USA was due in part to its finely honed system of merchandise flow. Rather than maintaining an expensive network of warehouses and trucking lines, Comp USA management used computer software to help track inventory and anticipate consumer demand, allowing them to stock the right amount of merchandise in the stores. Through 1990, product lines at the Comp USA Superstores consisted largely of IBM cloned personal computers, including a private brand line known as CompuDyne. In 1991, the company persuaded manufacturer Apple Computer Incorporated to allow the distribution of the Apple Macintosh personal computer through Comp USA. As Apple had never before allowed distribution through discounters, the company regarded this agreement as reflecting its reputation as a national marketing force. Soon thereafter, CompUSA gained the right to sell another major personal computer brand, Compaq. While 35% of CompUSA's sales were to corporate buyers in 1991, a growing market of home computer users also fueled the company's expansion. In the early 1990s, an estimated 75 million Americans were using personal computers, and users were increasingly willing and able to install and maintain their own equipment without deferring to a computer expert. Moreover, dramatic increases occurred in the number of Americans either working from computers in the home or running home-based businesses as their primary occupation. Catering to this new market, CompUSA provided free information pamphlets throughout its stores to help consumers better understand product capabilities, and the stores featured low prices that were particularly appreciated by small business and home users. In December 1991, CompUSA completed an initial public offering of its shares. Trading began at $15 and within a few months reached a high of $40 as investors left at the chance to buy into the burgeoning company. Losses reported in the prior year were attributable to control issues, and CompUSA sales continued to increase. By the end of 1992, CompUSA operated 36 superstores across the country and had plans to add 12 more over the next six months. The company also introduced training centers in most of its stores, offering computer courses to its customers that generated nearly $700,000 a month, most of which was profit, helping offset low profit margins caused by heightened competition in the industry. The company's sales for 1992 reached $820 million. 
In 1993, CompUSA decentralized its corporate structure in preparation for future growth. Nathan Morton was promoted from president to chairperson and CEO, replacing Ronald Dubin. Morton divided the company into three operating units responsible for the eastern, western, and central areas of the United States. An international unit was also formed to research expansion into Canada, Mexico, and Europe. In spite of the company's expanding sales territories, however, profits lag. Typical quarterly sales increases of 60% failed to generate similar increases in net income, and during the first quarter of 1993, CompUSA reported a 65.8% increase in sales and overall losses totaling $986,000. Operating expenses associated with opening new stores as well as high interest expenses contributed to the loss. At a board meeting in December 1993, Morton resigned. Morton's replacement was CompUSA's President and Chief Operating Officer James Halpin, who had come to the company six months earlier from the home base home improvement chain. Halpin oversaw the last weeks of the fiscal second quarter in which sales surged 65% and the company posted a loss of $5.5 million. He agreed that expenses had gotten out of hand. Rather than trimming expenses by slowing the company's growth, Halpin's plan included outsourcing assembly of Computine computers, centralizing inventory management, and consolidating the executive structure by eliminating several executive positions. With these measures, Halpin hoped to restore CompUSA to profitability, facilitating his plan to open 30 new stores by June 1995, which would bring the total number of superstores to nearly 80. Halpin quickly asserted himself, orchestrating a remarkable turnaround that soon had industry observers applauding the resurrection of CompUSA. As he had initially announced, CompUSA's corporate structure was trimmed, purged the post deemed superfluous. Operating costs were slashed and the company's merchandising mix was revamped, marking the exit of products such as ready-to-assemble furniture to make room for higher-profit computer accessories. By mid-1996, the company was preparing to announce record sales of $3.5 billion and, more impressively, record profits. CompUSA's chief operating officer, Hal Compton, described the influence of Halpin's leadership in an interview with Discount Store News on May 20, 1996. In August of 1994, he said, Our stock was at 6, we'd lost $20 million in the previous year, and we were completely out of cash. A year and a half later the stock is soaring, nearly $35 per share at the time, we're reporting record profits and we're sitting on $300 million in cash. Less than two years after insolvency loom, CompUSA could justify developing ambitious expansion plans. With 105 stores in operation by mid-1996, the company announced it would add 25 units in 1997 and another 35 units in 1998, aiming for a projected total of 200 stores by the end of the decade. An even bolder bid toward expansion had been made earlier in 1996, when CompUSA attempted to purchase Tandy Corporation's 100-unit Computer City chain. It fell through, however, only to be revived months later when negotiations resumed. Eventually, in August 1998, CompUSA completed the windfall deal, purchasing one of its most nettlesome rivals for approximately $175 million. The company appeared destined to blanket the nation with its stores, but not long after the Computer City acquisition was completed, Halpin found himself occupying as tenuous a position as he had occupied only a few short years earlier. CompUSA, for the second time in six years, was suffering company problems. By the end of the 1990s, CompUSA was adrift financially again. The company reported an operating loss of $54.2 million in June 1999, with analysts projecting a $22 million loss on declining sales in 2000. In response, the company's stock value by the end of the decade, desperate times had descended on CompUSA. Another miraculous comeback was needed, and the ramifications of its failure were straightforward. It's clear this turnaround has to work, CompUSA's chairman told Business Week on December 20, 1999. If it doesn't, the management has to be changed, he added. With his back against the wall, Halpin announced his plan for recovery, pinning the company's hopes on an online operation called Cozone.com and the alteration of CompUSA's merchandise mix, which was expected to reflect a greater emphasis on expensive consumer electronics products such as digital cameras, handheld computers, smart toys, and cellular phones. 
As Halpin began implementing his vision, an added twist to the mystery of CompUSA's future occurred in March 2000, when a massive, Mexico-based telecommunications and retail conglomerate, Grupo Sanborn's SA de CV, acquired CompUSA. Concurrently, Grupo Sanborn's announced it intended to sell 49% of CompUSA to a consortium comprising Telefonos de Mexico, San Antonio-based SBC Communications Incorporated, and Microsoft Corporation as CompUSA charted its course for the beginning of the 21st century. The influence of its new owners remained as unclear as its ability to establish itself as a retail leader. Formerly headquartered in Miami, Florida, it was a wholly owned subsidiary of U.S. Commercial Corp. SAB de CV associated with Grupo Carso and indirectly controlled by a common shareholder, Carlos Slim. In 2003 Comp USA acquired Good Guys a chain of consumer electronics retail stores with 71 stores in California, Nevada, Oregon, and Washington. In 2005 they converted three Comp USA stores and 13 Good Guys stores into megastores. Closed all 46 Good Guys locations. Began marketing in California and Hawaii as Comp USA with Good Guys Inside in response to Best Buy's marketing campaign with Magnolia Inside. Also, the same year Comp USA also started a customer loyalty program called the Comp USA Network. For every dollar spent at any Comp USA store, the customer received 13 points. 2006, sales of the CompUSA network membership cards were suspended pending further investigation onto the operation's effect on customer retention and program awareness among low visit customers. Later they announced the end of the network reward program. All customers were issued coupons for the remaining reward value. They were also offered a refund of the original purchase price in the original form of payment, surrendering remaining points. In the second half of 2006 the fall of the original CompUSA started when they announced the closing of 15 stores across the United States including several locations in California. These stores were being used to liquidate discontinued items from other stores across the nation until the end of October. Roman Ross, a former Philip Morris executive, replaced Tony Weiss as president and CEO after only four months in office. In November, Comp USA launched their new home entertainment rollout in 40 of its stores, including Puerto Rico, that sold a variety of high-definition televisions and home theater equipment. Ross claimed that home entertainment was one of his chief focuses as the new CEO. In September, it was reported that Comp USA's Mexican parent, Grupo Carso, was interested in putting Comp USA up for sale. On December 7, 2007, Comp USA was sold to Specialty Equity, an affiliate of Gordon Brothers Group. On January 6, 2008, a month after Comp USA was sold to Liquidators, Systemax Incorporated Tiger Directs then parent company announced its purchase of 16 Comp USA locations as well as the brand, trademarks, e-commerce business, and technical services. Systemax also had announced that the 11 existing and 3 Tiger Direct branded retail stores that were under construction would be converted to the Comp USA brand over the spring of 2008. On November 2, 2012, it was announced that Systemax would drop both the Comp USA and Circuit City storefront brands by consolidating their businesses under the Tiger Direct brand and website. That officially marked the end of the Heritage Comp USA brand name as used by Systemax. Customers of both businesses were informed via email on November 7, 2012. In 2018 the Comp USA brand returned as an affiliate website, though it later shut down. As of early July 2023, Comp USA's website is offline and inactive at its original domain. All across America, computers are changing people's lives, and one company is changing the way people buy them, Comp USA. With the brands you want, all at guaranteed low prices. Like Corel Draw 3.0, the easy to use all in one graphic software. And find any window document in three seconds with Phoenix Eclipse Find. We're everything you're looking for. We're Comp USA. America's computer superstar. If you have any fond memories, please indicate it at the comments below. Thanks for watching, subscribe, and like.